Hey everyone, it's Brian here. I'm awake, are you? And if you're awake, you know what's going on in this world. This world is heading toward the tribulation fast. But before that happens, a rapture will happen. The catching away of the saints of God. Every born again believer on this planet will be taken off just in the nick of time, right before the tribulation starts. And is the tribulation about to start? It sure looks like it. Are we in the last days? Yeah, we're in the last days. How much time do we have left? I have no idea, but it can't be much longer. Uh, it's just by the signs. If it wasn't for all these signs, these these dastardly signs out there that are pointing to the tribulation, I wouldn't be having this podcast. But the signs are everywhere. They're everywhere. Uh, we see them on television every day. And what's it pointing to? I'll say it again. Jesus is about to return in the clouds to take us to heaven. And we're almost there. And we're going to look at one thing today on a news article, and then we're going to get into some scripture. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome to this channel. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being part of this family. I'm humbled. Literally, I say that, and I mean it, because I didn't think this channel would go anywhere. And it's definitely going somewhere. And God's built a great family here of a lot of spirit-filled, born-again believers. And I, I really, really appreciate all of you. I really do. And one of these days, really soon, we're going to meet on the streets of gold. <laughs> and I could say that, and it's true. It's not a Hollywood script. It's not a movie. It's it's real. It's reality. Actually, where we're going is more real than where we are now because where we are now is temporary. All the stuff around us is temporary. Where we're going, it's not temporary. It's permanent. It's eternal. It's everlasting. The cars we buy, the things we buy, you buy a brand new car, you're all excited because you're going to pick it out. You finally buy a brand new car, whatever car, it doesn't matter. You're all excited about this car. And next thing you know, years go by and now you're trading it in for another car, but you were so excited about it in the beginning. It just gets worn out. Oh, you got to do maintenance on it. We have to do maintenance on these bodies, these fleshly bodies. How much time we spend on ourselves just to get out the door? It's just ridiculous. But none of that's going to be mean anything in heaven because we're going to have glorified bodies. We won't have to brush our teeth anymore. We won't have to go to the, you get our hair cut anymore. We won't have to buy clothes anymore. We won't, we won't have to go to the doctor and get checkups anymore. We won't have to take medications anymore. We won't be depressed anymore. All that's, just think about the time each of us spend on just what I just said. Years of time, if you add it up. Sleeping. How about a third of your life is, well, some people don't sleep as good as others, but let's just say a third of your life, you're asleep. You're never going to sleep again. You won't have to. There's no Actually, there's no more night. There's no more night. And you don't get tired. You don't get insomnia. You know, we talk about going to heaven, but these are the things in heaven that we're not going to have to deal with anymore. You won't have to deal with this stuff anymore. What's that going to be like? <laughs> Can you imagine? Wow. Wow. But this is where we're going. And that's why I get hurt every single day. Almost, excuse me, I exaggerated. Almost every single day. I take Sundays off and sometimes once in a while I miss because of work or something. But almost every day, I remind uh, um, us and I remind myself this channel and this family here is also for me. I, I I have to study. I have to read. I have to be up on stuff. And it, and it gets me, it lines me up. It lines me up with him. And that's why... Looking for our blessed hope, Titus 2.13, Jesus coming in the clouds, purifies you. You, you it, it makes you, oh yeah, he's coming back. I, I don't want to be doing things stupid when he comes back. And if I am, he'll forgive us and we're going to go anyway. But we want to be caught in the rapture, living for him the best we can. So it keeps me sharp. It keeps me like, you know, and so it purifies me. It purifies you. God's word is purified. And who's the word? The word the word is God. The word was God. The word was with God in the beginning. The word of God. In the beginning was the word. That word is coming for you. It's coming for me. We're going to see him in the clouds, in the sky of heaven of our present earth before we're taken to our new home. That's what's about to happen. 
That's it. What else is there? What else is there for the believer? It brings me hope. Knowing that our blessed hope is coming for us gives me hope. It gives me the ability to take this life one more day. I've said this before. What gives you hope today? Some of you out there may not have the blessed hope in you. Your hope is in money, relationships, fame, success at a business. And that, okay, that's fine. If that's giving you hope, that's a temporary hope. You want a hope that lasts for eternity? You want a hope that's going to bring you to heaven? You need to ask Jesus in your heart. You need to be saved. You need to have faith right now and believe that God the Father sent his son to die on this planet. He died, buried, bled on that cross. His blood paid for our sins forever. You need to pray that prayer right now and ask him to come into your life right now. You need to have faith and believe this right now before it's too late. What do you mean it's too late, Brian? Well, you could die today or the tribulation can start. We could be gone. Next thing you know, I don't know the time frame between the two. But I don't think it's going to be very long. And now we're, us born again believers, we're up in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And you're stuck here on this planet. And it's not going to be good. It'll be the worst time in history of humankind, those, these seven years that are coming up. No other seven years, no other time in the history of mankind will be like this judgment, the seven years of the tribulation. That's what's coming for you if you don't know the Lord. But for us, hope is coming for us. The word's coming for us. Love is coming for us. And soon we're going to hear that trumpet. And it could be any day. It could be right now. And it's about to happen. Just look at something right now. Um, a news article. Hold on a second here, folks. I had this set up. Here we go. Okay, this is on the Gateway Pundit. It says, Chinese communist leader orders military to prepare for war. Chinese communist president ordered the People's Liberation Army to ramp up prep preparedness for war as reported by Chinese state media on Saturday, according to Barron's News. The president calls for heightened military readiness comes just days after China conducted large-scale military drills surrounding Taiwan. What is China waiting for? My guess is this election to see who's in charge. That's just my guess. But who's ever in charge at this point in human history cannot stop what's coming. What's coming? The tribulation. It's coming. God is a day appointed for that day to start, but he is a day appointed for us to be raptured first. This, this event here could happen any time. Could we see the invasion of Taiwan? Yeah, we sure could. Could we see China attack the mainland the United States? Yes, we could. But I'd say if that we see that, we're out of here within a day or two. If we see that. Not because were mentioned in the scriptures, you know, us. it's because that's a world war event on a major continent, a major country. That's why we're not here for world war three. Do we see it on the horizon? I'd say we see it more on the horizon. It's right in front of our face. What, I, I can't believe I, I'm the things I'm seeing and the things we're living right now every day on the news. And we're just like, yeah, whatever. I mean, there's there's believers out there. It's like, yeah, I think he can come maybe 40 years from now, 50 years from now. Yeah, We've always had wars. We've always been threatened by China. We've always been threatened by Russia. We've always had earthquakes. We've always had pestilence. Yeah, we always have. But Jesus said in these last days in Matthew 24, it's not that we always have these things. It's that these things will increase. Are they increasing or is it just me? Seems like they're increasing to me. 
this weird weather, the lawlessness, the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes, all this stuff is increasing like birth pains, just like our Lord said. China is going to attack Taiwan. That's a given. It's just a matter of time. World War III is about to break out. And we're gone before World War III. How close is the rapture? Is it November 11th through the 18th? I don't know. All I know, by from what I see on the news and read and research and pray, and I, the Lord's telling me in my heart, we don't have a lot of time left. He's not telling me a day. He's just telling me how much time left. I want to read some scripture and then we'll be done here. Um, yeah, this is it. First Peter 1, verse 13. I read this the other day and we'll read it again. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is an action verse. Prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope 50% on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, no, I misread that. Fix your hope 25% on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Nope, doesn't say that. It says, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What do you mean the revelation of Jesus Christ? When we see him revealed, revelation means be revealed. Something was hidden is revealed. A hundred percent of our attention should be on him and not just on him, on him that he could be here any moment. And it says, be sober in spirit. What's it mean by that? Don't let the stuff around you distract you from your hope. Don't let things come into your life that are going to distract you. Don't be doing anything that you know you shouldn't be doing to distract you. We are soldiers in God's army. Soldiers don't get distracted. They keep their eye on the fight. And they take the fight to the enemy. They don't let the enemy beat them up. They go after the enemy. We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. Jesus has given us all power and authority over all demons, all spirits. Satan himself. That's how much power we have. We do not realize how strong we are as a church. We do not realize how strong we are as a believer. Really, I mean that. You are more, you're stronger than you think you are. You can take more than you think you can take. You can give out and dish out more than the enemy can take. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You just got to be a humble and contrite servant of God who loves the Lord, who is seeking him with all their heart. And if you're not, he who's in you is still stronger than he who's in the world. God's got us covered on every aspect of our life. But yet we worry and we fret and we doubt. That's me. I'm going to go to another. This is First Peter chapter 2. It's going to be in Peter today. Starting at verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We are the people of God. <laughs> Think about that. This is... This is, this is what Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. These people who lived in that time, I've talked about all the time, one of my favorite chapters of all the Bible is Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. They weren't, they weren't looking for a city that a humans built. They were looking for cities built by God, whose maker is God. That's who they were looking for. They were looking for God to come. They were looking for that holy city then. 
how much more we now, at the end of the age, with all these things going on, with all the technology, all the wickedness, all this stuff, how much more should we be looking for that city that comes down out of heaven? How much more should we be looking for the rapture? It's an insult to God. I got to be careful. I, maybe I'll retract that. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. How would you feel? You're engaged to get married. And the bride doesn't remember the, the wedding day. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to be there on that day, right? What day was it again? Oh, yeah, I'm getting married. That's right. What was his name? <laughs> Can you imagine? What kind of marriage would start off like that? How would you feel? How would you feel? We're about to get married. We're about to be joined to our Lord in heaven. He's about to come and take us out of this place. And I've already read this. And he's excited just yesterday. John 17. He's he's excited for us to, to show us his glory. Hey, here I am. What do you think? <laughs> do I meet your expectations? <laughs> well, you know the answer to that. Of course. Are you kidding? He's the son of God. But the son of God is coming for his bride. And now a lot of us are looking. There's a lot of believers looking, but not compared to the population of the born again church. Why? I don't know why. I guess the world, they don't realize it. They don't think it's important. I don't know why they don't think it's important. I got to live for God now. I just can't live pie in the sky. Wait for that rapture. You know why? Because he, I look for it this year and he doesn't come. I'm going to be disappointed. Okay, I'm sorry you're disappointed. But we're commanded to look for the rapture. We're not, he's not asking us. He's going to give a crown of righteousness to those who are loving his appearing. Don't you think it's kind of important that if he's going to give a crown of righteousness, he wants us to look for him to come? When he comes, he comes. He gets here, he gets here. I don't know when he's going to get here, but we got to keep looking until the day we die. If it's 50 years from now, I don't care when it is. I just know it's soon. But whenever it is, I'm going to keep looking. What am I saying? I'm, uh, like I said yesterday, what am I going to look at? There's nothing on this earth anymore that motivates me except knowing him and the power of his resurrection. One more passage and I'll be done, guys. Um, now we'll finish up this. We're a chosen people, right? We once weren't a people of God, but now we are. Revelation 22, starting at verse 1, down through verse 5. Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal coming from the throne of God and from the Lamb. In the middle of its streets, on either side of the river, was a tr the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will no longer be any curse, and the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his bond servants will serve him. They will see his face. I got to stop right there. I'm not done. You're going to see the face of God. Think about that today. Think about that. When all hell's breaking loose, or you're having a good day, maybe you're having a great day, think about you're going to see the face of God. He's no longer going to be hidden from you. If there's a God, let him show himself to me right now. If there's a God, let him do this. If there's a God, let him do that. You won't say that because you're going to see his face. And his name will be on their foreheads and there will longer be any night and there will shall not have the need of the light of the lamp nor the light of the sun because the Lord God will illumine them and they will reign forever and ever. I can go on article after article after article of all the things going on in Bible prophecy. 
I'm choosing to just do one or two articles here and there. Sometimes I go down a list, but I'm trying to stick just to one or two because the most important thing is the word of God. Not the words from a website that has an article about World War III, the word of God. Because this is all going to be going away. But what I just read is everlasting. Those scriptures, those words will never fade away. When we get to heaven, they're going to meet us there in heaven. Why? Because the word of God is in heaven and the word dwelt among them. And he's about to dwell among us. The word of God is about to dwell among us. Jesus is about to come back. You're going to meet the son of God personally. You're going to fall at his feet and literally physically see him. You're going to know him by his walk. You're going to know him by his audible voice. You're going to know him by the color of his eyes, by the, the tone of his skin, the way he's built, the way he looks. Just like you know your spouse or want somebody you love, you've been around for years, you know them by that. You can pick them out in a crowd of hundreds of people because by the voice, you recognize that voice. And soon that person who you already know in your heart, you already believe in, is coming for you to take you to a place that he's prepared for you. I go away to prepare a place for you. And my father's house are many dwelling places, but we're not so I would tell you, but there is. And I go away to prepare a place, to add an addition, to build a house. So when I come and get you, I have somewhere to take you. There's a building project going on in heaven right now. It's almost done. We're about to receive our keys to our mansions. We're going to be walking on these streets for a long time in heaven. We're going to be fellowshipping together for a long time in heaven. No more anger, no more jealousy, no more weird feelings around people. None of that. It's all gone. You're not a robot. You're you without the sin nature. Wow. Sorry. Yell on the camera, but wow. What's that going to feel like? Not to have that struggle inside. You have that struggle inside every single day, right? The fight between the flesh and the spirit and the enemy. All oh, that's gone. Why in the world are people not looking for the rapture of the church any moment? Just thinking about this stuff, being gone from us, doesn't make me want to go live out in the mountains it doesn't really make me jack up my credit card and say he's coming any minute. I'm going to go have fun. It makes me it makes me want to get to know him more. I want to get to know this person who's about to come for me any minute. And the things that are gone on this earth, they're going to do what they're going to do. Good luck with that. We're going to be in heaven. I can't wait. I can't wait. Can you tell? <laughs> Can you tell? Oh, my goodness. It's just... Uh, Wow, what a blessed hope. Think about what we're about to encounter in the rapture. I love you guys. I really love you guys a lot. Just, you know, one day at a time. Jesus said, Matthew 6, don't worry about yesterday. It's gone. Tomorrow's not here. Just here right now is here. Just deal with today. Just deal with it. Jesus said that himself. The world is going to... It's got enough trouble of its own. Just deal with today. And you know what? Guess who's living in today? He's living here with you in today. Jesus is in you. The hope of glory. I love you guys. I'll see you in the clouds. Brian, your brother out. Bye-bye.